if if we see illegality happening, and and this why I bring in Senor, because somebody has been clothed with the responsibility to stop the illegality. There is the dereliction of duty in that regard. Mm -hmm. You now want the citizens to go to court to compel the individual who has been giving both the political and also the resource ability to do what we are paying them to do, to go and compel them to do their work. I mean, how, yeah, how, how, the how does, how, how does yeah, that make whereas sense? Whereas it's true, Senor, before you come in, that whereas is law. For us, that is what the law says, organized labor, that is where my beef is. Organized labor is the only potent body in this country that in the unlikely event of the executive presidency being, being intransigent in operationalizing some of these things, they can force his hands to do it because our parliament is partisan. They will go there and NDC and MPP will fight at the end of the day. They may either not take a decision, the meeting will end inconclusive, but organized labor can compel the executive president to act. And this is where the failure can, can, can came in. You see, you see, you see, you see, I'll come to you, I'll come to you. Um, Dr. Johnson, yes. w you, when, when uh, uh, Mr. Dame was speaking, there was a point he made about what the unions would do and you wanted to come in briefly. Yeah, um, so I, I, I want to put on the record that um, the statement that was made is not coming from organized labor. Uh, the statement that uh, Josh, uh, Joshua Sir read yeah. did not come from organized labor. How do you mean? He is a secretary general. He is the secretary general for TUC and the leader of um, organized labor. Mm -hmm. But if you say organized labor, that comprises all the unions. Um, and, and there's a procedure for taking decisions at meetings. Mm -hmm. On that particular day, we anytime organized labor has a meeting, the issues are put on the table. We discuss it. And then we take a decision, pray, and then invite the media in, after which we, we disperse. On this particular occasion, we got in there, a statement was read to us. And I got up and, and, and asked Isaac Bumpo and Josh, if you've already taken a decision, then why do you call us to come and do what? And they took offense that I questioned, you know, why they did that. And so they apologized and said, OK, oh, well, the, sub, uh, the topic is subject for debate. And so let's, let's uh, decide on the way forward. Now, it was obvious that apart from the, the registered nurses, ICU, and consent teachers, every other body in the room was opposed to the uh, suspension of the strike. I see. At some point, Isaac Bumpo invited well, the media in. And I had to quickly rush him and say, no, we haven't finished discussing the issue and we haven't taken a final decision, so why do you want to bring in the media? And so, um, at that point, the chairman for, for TVZ was on the floor talking, when on the blind side of everybody, the media was invited in, and the statement that had been read, that had been opposed by organized labor, because more than 90% of the unions in the room opposed the, the suspension of the strike, they brought in the media and read a statement to them. So it is erroneous to say that this is organized labor. This is the view of Josh Ansan, Isaac Bampo, and his cohorts. And that is why Utah was so disappointed that that, that that thing happened. So you mean they came in with a, a written statement? They came in with a prepared speech, read it to us, and I was the one who questioned them why they've taken a position and want us to support it. And so they had to apologize and say that, well, let's deliberate and take a decision. So that statement that was read was not the outcome of the meeting you had. It was by no means the outcome of the meeting. In fact, that meeting did not end. Isaac Bumpo invited the media in abruptly and read the statement to them as coming from organized labor. And so that's why I wanted Mr. Gamet to know that organized labor is opposed to the statement that was read. And that it was complete charade. And that is what Prof. Jumpo and I put it out there. This statement didn't come from organized labor. No, I agree. Yeah. I agree with you because no, that, that, I, I, I got to, that, I got that, to know too. You see, that, that if, if we have, and say, if we have a, a disorganized, organized labor, that's, that's a big problem, is it not? It is a big problem, but I, I think that it's also a wake-up call 
We must first realize we are citizens and the call on us is on us as citizens. As much as we hope that organized bodies within the citizenry can sometimes stand in the gap, we should know that we all have a role to play individually in standing in the gap. Why don't we have an organized citizenry? So mm -hmm. we also have a dereliction of duty. We can't be hoping that um, it is Professor uh, Jampo and uh, Bampo and Joshua who should necessarily be the ones who should stand in the gap for us or not. In any case, the unions are a collection of individuals. Mm -hmm. You don't really run a pool like you effectively did with Utah to know the position of everybody. If, you, if GUC goes for a vote, they will lose. The way you tagged it, there's nobody who's going to support this thing. Everybody's tired of the party politics. Now we see an existential threat to our own lives. So it is time for everyone as Ghanaians, stop waiting for somebody to fight for you. We always want people to do things for us. Who will do something for Ghana? Who will do something for yourself? Yesterday, you saw the church. The church, the Catholic church, they led this charge. I was happy to be having part of them. And they did it. They protested in that prayer walk. I'm not Catholic. I joined them. It's the largest garden I have seen. I've not seen any of MPP put that garden before. If tomorrow they say we should all get out there, you know what we're doing? People are rather busy in their cars taking uh, 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 really? videos and watching. Hey, senor, as hey, senor, we see Guys. We can't wait for anybody to fight our fight for us. At this junction in our life, we have to turn right. Left is not an option. We have to turn to that which is right for the good of our Ghana. There are that which is right for, for our children and our children's children. We are not going to wait for any Bampo to get his sense together. We are not going to wait for any Joshua to get his sense together. And I'm not going to spend my energy on this organized labor. I did this organized they are. All right? And I thank God for you, Tag that they still maintain the conscience of the country. I understand the basis for a conversation. Government, these were the demands of organized labor. One, immediate declaration of a state of emergency in line with the provision of the 1992 constitution. In, in order to halt, to, uh, order to halt to all forms of mining, immediate evacuation of all mining equipment in forest reserves and around water bodies. The deployment of the police and military with full orders to remove, destroy all mining equipment and other earth moving, moving equipment. In water bodies. In, yes, um, in forest reserves and water bodies. I mean, now, now the, the politicians are beginning to reduce that part of it. I mean, not you, but I'm saying generally, you realize the conversation is now going water bodies. They are forgetting that there's a forest reserve part of it. Number two, the immediate revocation of LI 2462, establishing a, a, a special court. This. It's not a position that just by organized labor. It is a position that was 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 negotiated and agreed to by by right. the broader coalition. With government. So with the media coalition with against against against. against with, with against. Endorsed I mean, them. we all did. Yes. We're all part of it. I was there. I went for that particular press conference. I spoke at the place. So that was mm -hmm. the position of the collective. Mm -hmm. Now it is really put out there. What has government done? This happened what, on the eleventh of um, September. These are things that government should have actually taken an action on. You don't try and issue a statement just the day before the deadline and expect that you still don't proceed with the position because you've been totally disrespected, disregarded. What did government do? Government granted some of this, we have to agree. Mm -hmm. All right, you granted, but you granted it in intent, not in deed. If somebody really wanted to do this, at the time of this conversation, at the time of um, the National Security Minister calling all, all, all kinds of the representatives together to have conversations with them, they did with members of our coalition to have a conversation with them. In fact, Labour didn't want to go in the, in the beginning. But the mm -hmm. same actors who have led to this disorganization forced their hand and encouraged them to go. You understand? There's always an incentive for politicians to influence the decisions some, of organized. Some. There's always an every politician. There's an incentive. It doesn't mean that they will do it. There's always an incentive for politicians to control the narrative of organized citizenry. Absolutely. But there's always one. Mm -hmm. So you must safeguard it when you see that the call is bigger than you. Ghanaians were trusting labor to lead the fight in this one. They failed. 
There's no two ways about it. You can't come and tell me that somebody who has always been saying things is in the pipeline and never delivered anything on the pipeline. The day that they saw the fire was coming out, they said, oh, now I will go and deploy this. Now I will go and do this. Where is the thing? You go on strike if you really want to live by, by, by your words. You go on strike. When you go on strike, you wait till you see that things actually being done. Then you pull back. Nobody wants to be on strike. Then you have to get it right. You talk, these are people who are also parents. Mm. You understand? I'm and also I, I, even though I was a member of UTAC, I was a lecturer at the University of Ghana for, for, for a period. I've run away. You know, look, <laughs> you're pay yeah. small pay. Um, <laughs> Why do you have to small pay? Did, I, I went there for sacrifice, so it was it was a problem to go and sacrifice for the country. I mean, I just want to do it. I see. You know, but but I had quite some. So, if I so, may just okay, I'm, my brother, right. You see, the, when organized labor met the ad hoc committee that yeah, yeah, yeah. set up. They promised to come back to us with their proposals in a week for us to interrogate. They did not show up. So that showed the level of disrespect government had. And that was why we thought that, look, listen. Government has, has not been an honest counterparty. Exactly. So, so you know what, 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 what uh, they're uh, saying. Anyway, so, so, so as the, you, you, you yeah. cannot trust the assurances by the president that these measures that have been outlined would actually be implemented. So you see, Alfred, this is a problem. Step one. We must remember that the state has always had these powers. Mm -hmm. It was entrusted with the mandate by the constitution to manage all this all these years. If we didn't have the Ghana Water uh, press release coming out mm -hmm. in August, before God, we won't be here. Mm -hmm. Because you see it in Accra, when you open your tap, even though it's not coming every day, you see your water you are going. When that thing came up, that's when attention came to it. But when I speak to the Ghana Water executives, they tell us that the president is briefed every time about the deteriorating state of our water bodies. What has he done? He has done politics. You know what this conversation about is? The president's inertia, and look, let's face it, Nanado is the most powerful president after, I mean, uh, equal to um, um, Jerry Rollins mm -hmm. under this um, uh, fourth, fourth Republic. Kufo was not as powerful. Mama was no near powerful as, as, um, uh, as, um, as Nanado. If Nanado wants to do something, he would do it. But you know what? It was party politics. They claimed that they were losing seats in Galamse areas and NDC was taking advantage of it. Because of that, everybody has built an inertia. Two, it is also the funding of politics. Galamse is funding our politics, both the NDC and the MPP. We have to be honest about these things. Mm -hmm. It's the same way illegal force, and you can't I fix them. I that no, is not funding this. It's not it's funding all pol let political let parties. Let me, let me, let me, no, no, I'm coming. Please, let me, let me, let me, let me. So there is willful inertia. So a ruling government that is supposed to do it, and who is actually the bigger beneficiary of this Ghana say matter, polit partisan politically, will not want to do anything because he thinks he can hold inertia on the other side. Look at the, the statements you are getting from all the party people who go to the to the Ghana say sides. Mostly the MPP, but if also fund NDC people also going to tell the people that will let you continue your work. Why? Because people are looking for votes there. Mm. So their votes have become more important than the then, real mandate that your constitution calls on you. It has become more important than the lives and the future of your children, your children's children. Yeah. That is why this party political nonsense mm. must stop yes. over this matter. But the president of the day is the one responsible. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to do what he accused Rollins uh, Kufo for. And that's what is holding him back. Because he accused Kufo, and, and this is public information, of Policies that made his chances in 2018 not, not, not interesting, particularly fuel prices at the time. So he's also worried if he takes actions around Galamse, maybe that will also negatively affect his favorite candidate, which is Baumia, in this matter. My brother, what is your mandate? The people of Ghana or your party? Mr. President, you are failing us. You are failing our children. You are failing our children's children. What is at stake is bigger than you, is bigger than your party. It has everything to do with the future of our country. If you can't put it first, then you are not fit to still hold that office. And that is what everybody must know. This, we are calling on everybody to join the protest. Effective Monday, everybody wear something red. On Fridays, till we find a proper solution, everybody wear a red dress. We have to show politicians that we are up and in, in protest and against this thing, and we will defend the cause of our children and our children's children. And when we are caught out on the streets, don't sit in your rooms and be speaking English and drinking champagne. 
Be out there and fight for your future. Don't wait for any organized labor to organize anything for you. Organize yourself and join the fight for us to save the future of our country. Because the people we have entrusted it into don't intend to solve it for us. Has the president given you any reason to believe? None! Mr. Look, look, I'm telling you, you don't need a... Let me tell my this. This is so important a matter that you don't wait as a president for even there to be social agitation for. Mr. Nanadu has failed. And uh, look, look at the water bodies. A, a pupil teacher. Which pupil teacher will continue to want to stay in that environment when he has an op op opportunity to, to leave the place? Look at the water that girl is drinking. Think about her children. What will be in her system? What kind of babies will she give birth to? At the point, people have to look for their survival. And the person has more information in this country than anybody in this country. The next person to him is the security minister. Am I lying? And you are telling me you don't know this. You want it to get this deteriorated for Ghana Water to write a letter and talk about stability levels at 14,000, when these systems are built for 2,000, when treatment should be at five. For God's sake. No, no, you have failed, Nanado, and you should wake up to your responsibility. Make sense of the last time in your life, and you should be the one turning this thing around. You know how deep this thing is. It has corrupted the whole society. Our police is corrupted in this matter. Our military is being corrupted. So military officers, senior military officers I've spoken to, have been, have been, have been worried about trying, the attempt to even get their people back in there because they are scared they will also lose their military. Because people go there, the early days, they are fighting. Then the next minute, the next thing you see is that now the military people also joined, joined the Galamsey business because of the money in there. We have corrupted and warped our whole society. You speak to somebody in the Galamsey area, and he's not telling you that his life has advanced because now he's drinking bottled water, and he doesn't need to drink water from his river anymore. Can you see the nonsense inside? Yeah. You see, so I'm telling you, this thing is, is, is an existential matter. We have broken down the structures of our society. It needs proper leadership, and that leadership must come from a president who must lead it and charge it, whip up all the institutions, and be at the forefront of the advocacy. And be talking partisan politics. Why did it take them? What? Sorry, I'm very sorry, but this is really annoying. Look, almost one month to come back to labor. You issue a statement when? 24 hours before the deadline. You should have been negotiating a position, coming to a conclusion way a week before. So you all would have come up with one position and one communication. You have a structure on how you are even deploying it. Before that deadline, there should have been proper deployment to even give organized, previously organized labor, proper comfort to even say to, to suspend their strike. Nothing happened. You issue one statement, go and call people into the room and tell them to come and do what? I wait to then. If I may, just uh, you see, the, the, when, the when, we see, when we see the, the color of the water, we, we all get um, emotional about it. But the danger we face is not really the color. Mm. Look, the, 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 the heavy metals embedded in the water are far more dangerous. So when you can see a clear water, but the amount of arsenic, cyanide, mercury, lead and chromium that's in there, it's far more. And that is where the problem lies. So you getting a clear water is no indication of quality. And that point must be made. And we should be, we should be worried, not just about the color, but, but what is in there. 